Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One King, one Huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Have you got yours? Oh, yes. I've already started to build my Yukon Trail. Boy, isn't it fun. Don't you miss out. Get the cutout models of Sergeant Preston's famous Yukon Trail, offered by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the swell-tasting cereal shot from guns. No extra cost, no waiting. You'll hear full details in a few minutes. Jonathan Banks was both the skipper and the owner of the riverboat Yukon Queen. He had invested his life savings in the big sternwheeler at the start of the gold rush, hoping to make enough money in a single season to pay off the Seattle banking firm, which had financed the purchase of the steamer. Throughout the summer, all had gone well, and the Yukon Queen had been crowded to the gunnels with load after load of prospectors, trappers, and adventurers drawn to the north by the lure of sudden wealth. But early in August, the Yukon Queen had damaged her engine, and by the time repairs could be effected, it was too late in the season to make any more trips. Captain Banks, his weather-beaten face lined with worry, sat in his cabin, discussing the situation with his wife, Maud. Well, Maud, uh, we may as well face it. We're going to lose the Yukon Queen. What are we going to do, Jonathan? There's only one thing we can do. We'll have to sell the Yukon Queen... Use the cash to pay off what we still owe. But where can we find a buyer on such a short notice? That won't be easy. Especially now, with the season over and the ship laid up for the winter. We just have to take the best offer we can find. But, Jonathan, if we do that, we're sure to take a terrible loss. It's our life savings that's tied up in the Queen. I know that, Maud. But we have no choice. Anyway, it's not the money I mind so much. It's the thought of losing the Queen. By thunder, she's the finest vessel on the Yukon, or anywhere else, for that matter. Come in. Captain, there's a man come aboard who wants to talk to you. Who is he? Says his name's Pharaoh Dillon. All right, send him up. Aye, aye, sir. A moment later, Pharaoh Dillon was ushered into the cabin. After introducing himself to the captain and his wife, he came quickly to the point. Captain... How much would it cost to charter the Yukon Queen for a trip from here to Eagle City? You mean next spring? I mean right now, as soon as you can take on fuel and get ready to sail. Look here, mister. I don't know whether you're crazy or not, but in case you don't know it, the Yukon's full of ice. Another week or so, it'll be frozen solid. Every other boat on the river's already laid up for winter, either at Whitehorse or Fort Hamlin. I know that. That's why I've come to you. Well, you've come to the wrong man. I'm not interested. Would uh, $20,000 change your mind? <laughs> 20000 Holy mackerel. Why, Jonathan, that would be enough to pay off the bankers. Yeah. Yes, I know it. What I don't savvy is why this gent should be so anxious to make such a trip at this time of year. It's not me who wants to make the trip. Then who does? Well, I'm acting on behalf of a rich old lady, Mrs. Smith, her name is. She buys and sells a great deal of mining property. Right now, she's involved in a very important deal that has to be closed at Eagle City. Unfortunately, she's too old and frail to make the trip by dog sled, so she's willing to pay you to take her on the Yukon Queen. I see. Well, what do you think, Jonathan? Uh, <clears throat> how soon does Mrs. Smith want to leave? Well, how soon can you be ready? I can take on fuel and get up steam in a couple of hours. 
But I'm hanged if I'll strike out into the channel after dark. What about shoving off tomorrow morning? That sounds reasonable enough. Any objection if the old lady sleeps on board? I guess not. All right. Mrs. Smith will be down at the dock at 8 o'clock tonight. You can have a cabin all ready for her and sail at the crack of dawn. For a long time, Sergeant Preston had been trailing a vicious criminal named Bat Nelson, who had broken jail at Whitehorse. The sergeant had traced the outlaw to Dawson City, and there Bat Nelson had once again given him the slip. At Mounted Police Headquarters, Sergeant Preston discussed the situation frankly with Inspector Conrad. I hate to admit it, Inspector, but we seem to have run up against a blank wall. Sergeant, you're sure Bat Nelson hasn't skipped town? It's practically certain, sir. We know he was hiding in Lawyer Mattoon's office till yesterday. Yes, but that was 24 hours ago. Shortly after I arrested Mattoon for murder, I took King over every trail leading out of town. On none of them could he pick up a trace of Bat Nelson's scent. What about since then? Since then, I've had a constable posted on every trail. Hmm. In other words, you have him bottled up here in Dawson. He may be bottled up, but unfortunately, that doesn't tell us where he's hiding. What about the city patrol, Sergeant? Have they picked up any leads? Not yet, sir. And having them comb all the dives and underworld hangouts in Dawson. Well, let's hope that they turn up a clue. If we can't catch Bat Nelson when he's right here in Dawson under our noses, every lawbreaker in the territory will think that he can defy the Northwest Mounted and get away with it. Meanwhile, Pharaoh Dillon had left the Yukon Queen and stopped off at the cabin of a local seamstress and washerwoman known as Big Mamie. Then, carrying a large bundle under his arm, he returned to the Northern Lights Cafe, which he owned and operated. He walked through the crowded cafe and went into a back room. A burly, scar-faced man was waiting for him. How about a trail? All set, Bat. You can go aboard tonight. The boat will sail tomorrow morning. Good work. Well, uh, what about the woman's clothes you were going to get me? I've got them right here, this package. Uh, let's see. Them. There you are. <laughs> Holy smoke, this dress is as big as a tent. It's got to be big if you're going to get into it. Whose was it, Big Mimi's? Yeah. I had her let down the hem a couple of inches. What'd you tell her? Well, I told her I needed to get up for a vaudeville act I was putting on here at the cafe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hold it up to me. <laughs> How do I look? <laughs> Put a veil over your face and half the sourdoughs in Dawson will be flirting with you. <laughs> that night, Pharaoh Dillon appeared on board the Yukon Queen, accompanied by a heavily veiled figure in woman's clothing. They were greeted by Captain Banks, who was standing at the head of the gangplank with his wife. Good evening. Evening, Captain. Mrs. Smith, uh, this is Captain Banks and his wife. How do you do? How do you do? do, you do? Uh, Mrs. Smith has a bad cold. She'd prefer not to talk any more than necessary. Well, now, that's a downright shame. Uh, if you'll show Mrs. Smith to her cabin, uh, she'd like to retire immediately. Here you are, ma'am. Got the cabin all ready for you. Thank you. I'll set your suitcase right down here. Maybe you'd like to have me help you get settled. Oh, no, no. As a matter of fact, Mrs. Smith doesn't like anyone fussing over her. She'd rather just be left alone. Well, uh, goodbye, Mrs. Smith. Goodbye. Well, I must say she's not very sociable. Oh, it's just her way. Incidentally, I uh, forgot to tell you, she wants her meals brought to the cabin, too. Hmm. Now, if you'll take me to the captain's cabin, I'll pay him the money. At daybreak the following morning, the Yukon Queen swung away from the dock and headed downriver. Later that same morning, Sergeant Preston was speaking to Inspector Conrad when a man who introduced himself as Joshua Scribner was ushered into the inspector's office. What can I do for you, Mr. Scribner? Inspector, you can tell me what in thunder happened to the Yukon Queen. The Yukon Queen? Oh, uh, you mean the riverboat? That's right. When I got into town last night, she was tied up at the dock. This morning, I intended to go aboard and talk to Captain Banks. Instead of which, I find the Yukon Queen has sailed away. Oh, that's strange. I understood that she was tied up here for the winter. So did I. That's why I came up here from Skagway. Say, don't you Mounties keep tab on the boats running in and out of Dawson? We do during the summer. But there hasn't been any traffic on the river since last month when the freeze-up started. Well, then I guess you can't tell me where the Yukon Queen was heading. I think I can, sir. Have you spoken to Captain Banks recently, Sergeant? Not recently, no, sir. But I do know that he's no fool. 
and he's proud of the Yukon Queen. He'd never risk moving her through the ice unless he was forced to do so or paid plenty of money. What are you driving at, Sergeant? Unless I'm very much mistaken, sir, the Yukon Queen's headed downriver toward the border. And I'm willing to bet that Bat Nelson was on board when she sailed. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. in today's story. Yes, fellas and girls, that's just one of the 59 cutout models you can get to build Sergeant Preston's famous Yukon Trail. And you don't pay extra for them. It's the most exciting offer ever made by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The swell-tasting king-size cereals shot from guns. Golly, with these Yukon Trail models, we can see just where Sergeant Preston and King are traveling on the Yukon Trail. You can see just where the deadly, cunning Bat Nelson has escaped him time after time. Look, you get models of the White Horse Jail, the haunted dead Dutchman gold mine, and the lumber camp where Bat Nelson hit out. And say, these models are different than anything you've ever seen. You said it. They're a lot bigger and easier to put together. You get scenery and the interiors of buildings. You get dog sleds and dog teams you can hitch up and move around. The Yukon Queen River boat even has a paddle that turns. And here's the thrilling part. These swell Yukon Trail models come right on special new packages of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. Oh boy, wheat and rice shot from guns is my favorite cereal. It's mine too. It tastes so good, it's nice and crisp. Well, that's great. You can make your Yukon Trail more complete every time you get a new, different package of Quaker Puffed Rice and Quaker Puffed Wheat. There are eight different packages with the numbers clearly printed on the front. And they're now at your grocer's. You'll want all eight packages so you can build the whole Yukon Trail. Package number eight for the Yukon Queen Riverboat and Dawson City Landing Pier. Package number six for the Mountie Headquarters. Package number one for the White Horse Jail and Sergeant Preston's Cabin. And all the rest of the eight different packages. Remember, there's no waiting, no extra cost. Simply go to your grocer. Ask for Quaker Puff Rice and Quaker Puff Wheat with the Yukon Trail models right on the packages. Act fast. Now to continue. When Sergeant Preston learned that the Yukon Queen had sailed from Dawson, he immediately suspected that Bat Nelson had used the riverboat as a means of escaping from the Northwest Mounted Police. The river's the one escaped route we didn't have covered. Sailing on the Yukon Queen would be an easy way for Bat Nelson to get out of Dawson and over the border. By thunder, Sergeant, I never thought of that. Just a hunch, sir, but it would certainly explain why Captain Banks is sailing at this time of year. Sergeant, you know where the police launch is berthed for the winter. Yes, sir. Take as many men as you need to operate her and head down river as fast as possible. Right, sir. May be a wild goose chase, but we can't take any chances where Bat Nelson is concerned. Inspector, I've come all the way from Skagway to talk to Captain Banks. If Sergeant Preston is going after the Yukon Queen, how about me going along, too? Any objections, Sergeant? Why, uh, none at all, sir, except that there may be gunplay. Oh, don't worry. I'll keep out of the way. All right, then. Come along. It was nearly an hour later when the police launch steamed out into the river in pursuit of the Yukon Queen. Sergeant Preston was at the wheel, and Joshua Scribner was standing beside him. King had gone up to the bow to watch excitedly as the launch plowed its way through the choppy, ice-strewn waters. Whew, that's a nasty wind blowing out there. Yes, there's a blizzard on the way. I think we can overtake the Yukon Queen, Sergeant? We'll try. If they sail at daybreak, they have a three-hour start on us. I have an idea Captain Banks will be picking his way pretty slowly through this ice. That should give us a chance to catch up with them. By mid-afternoon, the sky had darkened to a dull gray, and the wind had increased to gale velocity, lashing the river into angry, billowing waves that battered against the sides of the Yukon Queen. Captain Banks had personally taken over the steering of the ship, and his wife, Maud, had just come up on the bridge. Jonathan. What is it? Look back there. There's a boat coming around the bend. Call in, Michael. Why, what's wrong? That's the mounted police launch from Dawson. <laughs> 
What are they signaling to us for? I don't know. They must want us to stop, I guess. Stop the engine. A few moments later, the Yukon Queen had lost her headway, and the police launch drew steadily closer to the big river boat. Suddenly, Maud Banks glanced down the ladder leading up from the deck and exclaimed in surprise. Jonathan, look. Old Mrs. Smith is coming up to the bridge. Well, I'll be hanged. She sure looks mighty spry all of a sudden, the way she's climbing that ladder. The so-called Mrs. Smith was wearing the same heavy veils over her face that she had worn the night before. As she entered the wheelhouse, Maud Banks greeted her. If you're wondering why we stopped, it's because that boat back yonder just signaled to us. It's the police launch from Dawson. That's what I thought. Say, you're no old lady. <laughs> How'd you guess? Now that you're into my little secret, I may as well rip off this veil, eh? Huh? Jonathan, I've seen him somewhere before. Yeah, so have I. His picture's plastered all over Dawson on police posters. Then I guess you know who I am, eh? Sure do. You're Bat Nelson. Well, if you know that much, then you also know that I'm a bad hombre to monkey with. Eh? He's got a gun. That's right. Oh. And believe me, lady, I won't hesitate to use it on either of you if you try any false moves. And then, Captain, holler down that voice tube and tell him to get the engine moving full steam ahead. Meanwhile, on the police launch, Sergeant Preston and Joshua Scribner were watching the big stern wheeler intently. Suddenly, they saw the paddle wheel begin to revolve again. Sergeant, they're starting up again. I'll try another signal on the whistle. They're not stopping. They're picking up speed. That means Bat Nelson's taken over and he's going to make a run for it. Bob, give her all the steam she'll carry. The police launch was a short, stubby craft originally built for harbor work, and in speed she was no match for the Yukon Queen. Slowly but surely, the big stern wheeler began to pull away from her pursuer. Matt Nelson chuckled as he watched the smaller boat drop farther and farther astern. They'll never catch up with us. Sergeant Preston is on board that launch. I'd like to see his face right now. Captain Banks said nothing, but inwardly he was making a tense and fateful decision. His face was grim as he scanned the surface of the river. Ahead and to the right, he saw a large, jammed-up ice formation. He waited until they were almost abreast of it, and then he swung the helm suddenly to starboard. Hey, what are you doing with that wheel? Get away! With a rending smash, the Yukon Queen plowed straight into the ice pack. Fat Nelson was livid with fury. He swung his revolver at the captain's head. I'll fix you, your fool! The captain crumpled under the blow. Go ahead and kill him. Maybe I will after I get this lousy tub out of the ice. Hey, you! Down there in the engine room! Back the engine! The Yukon Queen shuddered from stem to stern as the paddle wheel churned violently in reverse. But it was no use. The big riverboat was wedged securely in the ice. Bat Nelson turned to Maud Banks, who was huddled over the prostrate captain, and jerked her roughly by the shoulder. Uh, listen, the captain's got 20,000 bucks of my money stuck away somewhere in this tub. You know how to get it? Take your hand off me, you murdering poke Take your oh. choice, lady. Oh. Either no. find that money and find it pronto, or else I pull this trigger. Cowed in spite of herself, Maud led the outlaw to the captain's cabin. She unlocked the small safe, and Bat Nelson helped himself to the money yeah. inside. And, uh, just to make sure you don't kick up a fuss, I'm going to lock you in here. As he locked the door, Bat Nelson glanced astern and saw that the police launch was rapidly approaching. Then he hurried to his own cabin and began pulling off the woman's clothing which he had used to disguise himself. A few moments later, the police launch drew up to the Yukon Queen. Ahoy, Yukon Queen! There was no answer from the riverboat. Joshua Scribner spoke to Sergeant Preston. What are you going to do, Sergeant? Come alongside and board them. You'd better keep out of sight in case any firing starts. As the nose of the police launch nudged up to the side of the Yukon Queen, King gave a mighty leap and landed on the deck of the riverboat. He sensed that the sergeant was closing in for an important capture. The great dog raced forward along the deck and then rounded to the other side of the ship. Soon he caught the scent of Bat Nelson, the desperate killer whom he and his master had been pursuing for so long. The door of Nelson's cabin was standing open. The outlaw had just finished pulling on his parka as King came charging in. Hastily, Bat Nelson grabbed up the mass of clothing which he had just discarded and flung it at the dog. That'll hold you for a second. Before the great dog could shake himself free from the entangling garments, Bat picked up a chair and smashed it down on King's head. That'll fix you for cheap. The great dog sank to the floor unconscious. Dropping the chair, Bat ran out on deck and headed toward the bow. 
moment later, Sergeant Preston and another Mountie climbed aboard the Yukon Queen. Come on, Dave. I'm with you, Sergeant. As the two Mounties ran forward. They saw a figure scrambling across the ice pack in the direction of the shore. There he goes. Holy smoke, he's going to try to make it across the ice. You stay here and see what happened to the people on board. I'm going after Bat Norson. Sergeant Preston ran to the side of the ship, swung himself over, and dropped to the ice below. By now, Bat Nelson had crossed the main ice pack and was moving from one piece of ice to another. He glanced over his shoulder and saw Preston vault down from the side of the Yukon Queen. He threw his gun and fired. But as he did so, he felt the ice lurch under him. Bat lost his footing and toppled into the raging waters. Sergeant Preston saw the outlaw struggling desperately to keep from going under. He raced forward across the ice pack and held out his hand to the man who had tried to kill him. Here, grab my hand. Bat clutched wildly at the sergeant's outstretched arm and somehow managed to seize it. The sergeant tried to pull him up onto the ice, but there was no way to brace his own position. And soon the sergeant himself slid into the water. Preston, for the love of Mike, you got to help me. I'm drowning. Save your breath. We'll be all right if you don't panic. The cold was paralyzing, and the fur parkas that both men were wearing served only to hamper their efforts. But finally, after an exhausting struggle, Sergeant Preston managed to drag both himself and the outlaw back up on the ice. I didn't think we'd make it. For a few moments, both men lay gasping and shivering on the ice as they sought to recover their strength. Then, as Sergeant Preston struggled to his feet, Bat Nelson realized that he had escaped drowning only to face the gallows. Come on, Nelson, get up on your feet. Uh, sure, I'll, I'll get up. And I'll give you this. The sergeant staggered backward under the unexpected blow and almost lost his footing. But he recovered and came back fighting. So you're not licked yet, eh, Bat? Well, let's see about that. Bat was ready with another punch, but the sergeant blocked it and landed a vicious right on the outlaw's jaw. There was a look of almost crazy hatred on Bat Nelson's face as he shook off the effect of the Mounties' punch and waded back into the fray. At that moment, Sergeant Preston knew that he was in for the fight of his life. I'm going to kill you, Preston, with my bare hands. Come right ahead. <laughs> In the next moment, both men seemed to have gone berserk as they dealt out blow after blow with all the desperate strength at their command. You haven't got a chance, Preston. I'll kill you yet. No. It was almost impossible to keep a steady footing on the ice. Finally, the sergeant slipped and went down. Instantly, Bat Nelson was on top of him. His huge hands closed around the sergeant's throat. I told you I'd kill you. With a terrific effort, the sergeant raised his knees and shoved Nelson away from him. Both men struggled to their feet. Then, as Bat Nelson rushed at him again, Preston caught the outlaw squarely in the face with a smashing right. The outlaw tottered and went down like a felled ox. Somehow, he managed to get up, but his legs were rubbery and his eyes were glazed. Again, he lunged at Preston, and again, the Mountie's fist sent him sprawling. This time, he stayed down. Had enough, Bat? Yeah, yeah, I had enough. Don't hit me again. And hold out your hands while I put on the handcuffs. It's the end of the trail for you, Nelson. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. Later, on board the Yukon Queen, Sergeant Preston learned from Captain Banks and his wife how Bat Nelson had tricked them by disguising himself as an old lady. He also learned about the dramatic events that had taken place aboard the riverboat after Bat Nelson had seized command. That was a brave decision you made, Jonathan, steering your ship into the ice pack. I don't know how brave it was, but it turned out to be mighty painful. I'm still seeing the stars from that rap on the head Bat gave me. King knows just how you feel. He got the same treatment. <laughs> well, I reckon we both survive, won't we, King? Just the same, I sure don't feel like cheering. So what's wrong? Well, now that it turns out that $20,000 Bat paid us was stolen money, we won't have enough cash to pay off the bankers, which means we'll have to sell the Yukon Queen. Maybe not, Jonathan. What do you mean? Well, for one thing, you've got a $2,000 reward coming to you for the capture of Bat Nelson. You're the one who captured that critter, Sergeant. As a police officer, I'm not allowed to accept a reward. Besides, uh, Bat would have gotten away if it hadn't been for what you did. So the money's yours, Jonathan. Well, that's mighty nice of you, Sergeant. But even so, I'm afraid $2,000 will not do us much good. Even if we could scrape up enough money to stall off the bankers, Yukon's queen still has a smashed up bow. It'll cost at least 5000 just to repair the damage. The reward's just one item. Besides that, Mr. Scribner here has come all the way from Skagway to offer you a contract. A contract? That's right, Captain. You see, I represent the Lodestar Mining Syndicate. We'd like to charter the Yukon Queen for the whole season. I'm sure we can agree on a price. 
But you heard the situation I'm in. I need money immediately. Money for repairs. Money to pay off the bankers. That can easily be arranged. I'll advance you whatever sum you need. When the contract's signed, well, we'll consider that the first payment on the deal. Oh, Jonathan, then we won't have to lose the queen after all. <laughs> By Juniper, I, I guess we won't at that. <laughs> Feeling better now, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell the world I do, Sergeant. I feel like a new man. Well, then, I guess the only thing that remains is to take Bat Nelson to jail. <laughs> he sure isn't looking as tough as he looked half an hour ago, the ornery sidewinder. I guess that lamb basin you gave him out on the ice took the starch clean out of him. He gave me the roughest fight I've ever been through. And the whole case has been just as bad ever since he broke jail at Whitehorse. All in all, Jonathan, capturing Bat Nelson's been the hardest assignment King and I have ever tackled. We're both very glad this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Hurry, fellas and girls. Grocers now have the new Quaker Pop wheat and Quaker Pop rice packages with the thrilling new Yukon Trail cutout. There are eight different new packages, each one clearly numbered on the front. You get 59 bigger, easier to put together models. Models of the Yukon Queen Riverboat, where Sergeant Preston had a fight to the finish with Bat Nelson. The Dawson Trading Post, Wells Fargo Office, the Haunted Dead Dutchman Gold Mine, Lumber Camp, Wild Yukon Animals, just to name a few. So hurry to your grocers. Ask for Quaker Puff Wheat, or Quaker Puff Rice, the famous cereal shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. And full of bang-up nut-like flavor. Get going. Build your complete model Yukon Trail from Whitehorse to Dawson City right away. The models come only on the big red and blue packages of Quaker Puff Rice and Quaker Puff Wheat. The original, crisp, fresh, shot-from-gun cereal that is never sold in bags or bulk. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of Uncle Joe's luck. When old Joe Finley's luck changed and he struck it rich, I was as happy as he was because he could share his good fortune with young Larry Findlay and his wife. Old Joe set out to see them at Selkirk but never reached there. Before we found out what happened to Uncle Joe, I found myself facing a killer's gun. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Remember, for delicious hot breakfast, enjoy Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. And here's why Quaker Oats is called the giant of the cereals. There's more growth, more endurance in oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So make your hot breakfast nourishing Quaker Oats. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. <laughs>